well, this is awkward. This is not what we had in mind when we thought about Spotlight Visit Day uh, six to nine months ago, but it's the current reality that we find ourselves in, and so we are going to adapt. We will not let this be an opportunity uh, that is lost to connect with you, to show you a little bit about this place that we all call home. And Indiana Wesleyan University, and specifically the Division of Art and Design here at IWU, is a really special place. It's a place where we see students transform, where faculty can collaborate and where we can bring our ideas to life, whether that's through studio art, photography, design for social impact, uh, visual communication design, or a plethora of other majors. But we want to know you better. Since this is a passive sort of video, it doesn't give us the chance to know who you are and what your interests are, what questions you may have. So we want you to be able to connect with us. Uh, whether that's a phone call, an email, or whether it's coming here to visit in person. Most people don't understand how truly special IWU is until they get here in person and on campus. It's one of those places where people take their talents and their skills that God has given them and they refine them for kingdom work. We believe that it's beyond us. It's bigger than just us here in this place. And we want to equip students to change the world that they find themselves in. While it's not the same as an in-person spotlight day, we hope this video that has been created by faculty and students collaborating will give you a small glimpse into this wonderful, amazing space that we inhabit, that we're privileged to inhabit. And if you see yourself being part of this, if you can imagine yourself being called uh, into this sort of place, we would really love to continue the conversation with you. We hope you stay safe, and keep making. I think the Division of Art and Design at IWU is unique because we really focus on seeing each person who's here for who they are and what God has put in them. And I feel like as, as a whole program, we have been blessed with the ability to really help each student figure out how God has made them and maximize those gifts in a way that makes them forceful in doing what they're here to do. My name is Henrik Soderstrom and I teach in foundations and I'm the coordinator of the first year foundation program. So we have a pretty unique foundations program here. It's the first year of a student's time at IWU. One of the primary goals is to help each student see with greater clarity how God has made them and what specific gifts the Lord has put in them and how those can flourish. And then we pair each student with, with technique, with new ways of thinking, with readings like, oh, go read this chapter from this book, or I photocopied this for you, it's on your studio wall, go check it out. We pair them with, with things that they need to know to, to just turn up the volume on these, these giftings that the Lord has given them. So there are, are two sides of the studios that students take in their first year. One we think of sort of like a, a skeleton in that it is structured and it's, it's, uh, it's solid. And those are called observation representation. And those include drawing and color theory classes. And they just tune your ability as a student to see the world around you more deeply and to, and to represent or represent it with more accuracy. Then we have this other side of our studios that we refer to as muscle classes because they're dynamic, they're pulsing, but they need that structure of the skeleton. And likewise, the skeleton needs the muscles to move. And these muscle classes are called ideation interpretation studios. And these are, are group studios where students work together and individually to produce work that ranges from drawings to paintings to videos to sculptures to wearable things to fashion shows all sorts of media that allow them to, through making things, think with their hands towards figuring out new aspects of how God has made them and how their gifts can be leveraged to impact the world in a way that is beautiful and for the kingdom of God. When students are working on something, I can see where they're working and struggling and I can come alongside them and help them um, realize the best way to deal with the problems that they're dealing with at that moment. And then also when they stumble onto things that are surprises to them, they have a hard time evaluating whether those things are, are 
worthwhile or something to avoid, and I can help them see which of those discoveries are ones that are worth pursuing versus ones that are uh, maybe a waste of their time. It's exciting to talk to students about um, objects that bring us into line with the big questions in life, like uh, the nature of beauty, uh, the nature of truth, uh, what constitutes a good life, all these big questions that are important for people to think about. I think my favorite thing about teaching is that it is like never the same semester to semester, and even day to day. I can give a prompt to my studio and ask everyone to solve one problem, and then as I go from one of my students to the next of my students, it's sort of like jumping from a pond to another pond that has a different temperature and different fish and different coral, and the next one's in the Arctic and it's got a shark over there. So just each student carries something so different that the Lord has imbued them with, and that, that inherent complexity and, uh, and sort of like multiplication always of new things makes it super fun day to day. Faith changes everything because God's presence changes everything. It's so, it's so amazing to me to be able to pray at the beginning of studio still. Like I've been here how many years, but coming from where I came from on the East Coast, uh, I, I still have sometimes this feeling like if I pray in class, am I gonna get fired? Like, is this okay, really? <laughs> and it's so good. So I think that praying and inviting inviting the Spirit's presence to be in the room allows Jesus to multiply everything that we do. I think that when God's presence is in the room, it changes our imaginations. It helps us to expand and, and think beyond the confines of what, uh, what exists on this planet because we're, we're collaborating with another kingdom. It was almost like clockwork. Every, every year or two, my dad would wait for me to come home for Thanksgiving break, and he'd sit me down and go, are you going to be able to find a job after this? And the answer was always, well, I think so. Well, I was trained as an interior designer, which is a very linear process. You, know, you get your program, you go through all the steps, you create a design that is exactly client-focused. But the, the way the industry has changed is that there's more freedom to be fluid and circular in your design process. And I think because you go through several um, iterations of a process, you actually get it right. Illustrators now, more than ever, have to be uh, entrepreneurial in their thinking. They have to look at multiple different market spaces. Um, they can still be content creators for clients, for publishers, um, but they can also be storytellers that have their own ideas they bring to the table. So maybe they start their own businesses. Maybe they go out and they create uh, their own worlds and they design these spaces and then they bring their project, their ideas to the marketplace. I would say right now I see the graphic design field as one that's expanding and really overlapping other disciplines, which means as designers there's a big chance to learn software as you might not have had to learn 10 years ago. Um, you can specialize in motion, you can specialize in packaging design and product design, all with really similar softwares. So I see a lot of overlap, I see a lot of chance for growth in the field and a chance for a lot of students to go into careers that they might not have chosen otherwise, just because everything is expanding. and. You know, I see it as a growing field. I see so many more opportunities, um, whether it's for jobs, whether it's in education, whether it's for graduate programs. So I'm really excited to see how the field grows just with, you know, technology advancing. And I think art inspires new technologies to be made and new technologies allow artists, designers, photographers to continue to create more. When students come in, a lot of them don't know what they don't know. And when they leave here, they know a lot about what they don't know, but they can leave with so much more confidence because they've developed their skills, they've become more uh, capable of um, understanding the kind of place that their art occupies historically and in the contemporary context, and they have a, an, a, a working understanding of the kind of art that they're making and, and where to go to continue making it better.
everything I needed to pursue my career and everything I needed to become you know, a functioning adult and someone who was able to navigate the challenges of life, I learned here. Um, I learned how to work hard, how to problem solve, how to think outside the box and how to work in teams. Um, all through working on art. That's, that's the art making process. It's learning how to take a problem and create a solution out of it that looks good, that satisfies these requirements, that works to, to help a wide variety of people. Um, and I don't think I would have got that had I not come here learning art. If I had gone anywhere else, that wouldn't have been my experience. I love my colleagues here, and I feel like we are, we are, we're a community that pushes each other, we're a community that comes up with ideas faster when we're together. When we're all in a room together, there is this magic that I think really just comes from the fact that each of us have been called by the Lord to be here at this time. So when ideas start coming to the surface, it's like there's, there's like this, uh, this this amplification that happens, like an echo that goes the other way sonically, and, and ideas flourish and possibilities flourish. And we're constantly, well, I'm constantly being challenged and pushed and, and, um, and in, a, in a beautiful way, like, like agitated to be better at what I do by the colleagues who I work with. I think this division is unique because of the people that make it up and the kind of culture that they create. We have fantastic people who work here in the division. They're creative, they're smart, uh, naturally talented, and they care about other people. I think this is uh, probably one of the most nurturing academic uh, departments and definitely one of the most nurturing art departments that I've ever encountered. Uh, there's a real spirit of uh, inclusivity and hospitality here that uh, I've not found other places. I think that's definitely something that makes us unique. I feel like our culture at the Division of Art and Design at IWU is really collaborative. It's really empathetic. It's driven by this desire to see the Kingdom of God released on Earth. And so that, I feel, affects the way that we hold our work loosely. We make things and we're invested in what we make, but we're always at our best willing to take risks because we know that all of this is just for the glory of the King. And so if we can, if we can take a risk and maybe lose it, maybe make it better, we, we delve into that parable that Jesus tells about planting a seed in the ground, letting it die, and then allowing it to grow into something new that has tons more seeds on it. So our risk taking, I feel like, is deeply rooted as a, as a cultural element in, in the gospel. One of my favorite verses is um, from Psalm 73, Whom have I in heaven but you, and beside you I desire nothing on earth. My flesh and my heart may fail me, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. And that is my hope for my students, is that they really, like, they're going to fail um, in all kinds of ways. So I want them to see me fail and realize that um, God's the only one who can step in and, and fill the gaps that, that we leave behind. Ron Mazellan, who is a long-standing faculty member, um, has this bit that he talks to incoming students every single year, and it's brilliant. It's about potential. And this idea of every student, every young person that comes into this School anywhere has potential, but the thing is, your parents don't know your potential, you don't know your potential, we don't know your potential, only God knows your potential. When I hear that someone has potential or I tell someone that they have potential, for me that means this is an invitation to rise to who you've been called to be, to rise above and um, grow into more of, of, of who you are um, and where God is leading you. And so it's, it's stated as an invitation, not as a, as a condemnation or as a judgment. Um, and so I think when Ron talks about that and saying like, you have so much potential, is this, this culture here speaks to this idea of there's such an invitation to rise above where you've been, your past, your history, 
your interests and, and, to, and to step into something more. There's an invitation to step into something more. And ultimately, what that lands on is like our culture here is like, it's not about us. And so it's, it's, it's giving your life to something that's beyond you. Um, and that's part of what we invite students to do in this process.